What's up, guys? So now that we've got our roller, uh, I got the, if you watched the last video, I had an issue with this lower A-arm bolt. I think the A-arm may actually be a little tweaked. It's just slight, but I was able to remove the front one, <clears throat> realign it, get the rear one in, and then work the, the front one in. So I'm not really sure why they didn't line up. I don't think the mount is bent, which is good. Tie rods are on. Camber or, cat or toe is way in, which is good. I removed the, the lock nut on the Heim and pushed that out. So now our camber is off on this side. So the next thing I want to show you how to do is to determine your extended and compressed shock length. And this is something most people don't do uh, unless you're a really hardcore racer. But you know, having the, having the correct shock set up whether it be valving or, you know, the, the lengths is pretty important. So what you do to determine the extended length, and let me step back and say this only works with a link, linkage-based bike. Because this is a no-link, the numbers don't work on the rear. Um, the no-link shock is so plush that it needs to be longer because just from the weight of the, the, sh the motor and all the other stuff itself, it's gonna, it's gonna sag and then you, it's gonna come down and then you got your own sag. When you sit on it, you need to set. So this will work for a 250R, standard 250R linkage setup. Um, it should work for 450R, YFZ, whichever. Uh, the, the numbers may be a little different. It also depends whether you're running XC. Uh, so there's kind of two groups. There's MX and then you have XC, uh, Desert, Dune, and the reason it's different is because you run a lower bike in MX. Uh, I think you subtract an inch off the top setting for MX, but don't hold me to that. So what you want to do is you want to set this at 12 inches, 12 inches off the ground. So usually if you have two by fours, um, a bunch of two by, a two by four is an inch and a half. So you can use a bunch of two by fours, get it right at uh, 12 inches in the front. I didn't have enough two by four, so I used a four by four, which is actually a little bit different. It's three and a quarter. So this is not a straight stack of four by, or two by fours. And then the rear, same thing, 12 inches. So, you know, double check it. It's right around 12 inches, right around 12 inches from the peg, bottom of the peg. And that's with no skid on, that's just to the bottom of the frame. So what that's going to do, that's going to tell you your extended length. So now if I measure center to center, I'm at about 18 and 7 eighths. And roll calls for an 18.75 inch shock on a setup like this, which is more desert or works, dune. I think their MX setup calls for 18.5. <clears throat> so it's going to be within that range. And the main thing with shock setup, the reason extended length is so important, is every set of arms eventually binds on the spindle. And if your shock is too long, so that the spindle, the ball joints, or the sphericals, or hinds, whatever is on it, binds and hits before the shock is actually fully extended, that's not good. It's gonna, it's gonna wear everything out. Um, you're gonna feel it a lot more because inside that shock, when that fully compresses, you know, it's, it's got some padding in there. So what you want to do is, you know, in this case, like I said, it's, it's right at, it's right at 18 and 7 eighths. Now, I have a little bit more travel, but that's why I roll set it at 18.75, just a, just a quarter inch or an eighth inch uh, shy of where that measurement is. So keep that in mind. Whatever, whenever you install, if you're buying used shocks, make sure you put this top mount on the shock and set the bottom one in the, in the mount, but then pull up on the frame and make sure that you still have some down travel on the arms themselves to know that the shock is going to bottom out, is going to, or not bottom out, it's going to extend and hit that its max length before your A arms do and before your spindles and, and stuff do. So that's, that's probably the most important thing. Compressed length, you have a lot more, 
lot more leeway. You're also going to get the same binding in the other direction, but most people don't know their compressed length of the shock because, you know, let's face it, most of us buy used. So, on the rear, oh, and also, you want to make sure your tire setup is what you're going to run, or at least the same size. So these are 21s. These rears, oblers, are supposed to be 20, but they actually measure 19. And I'll discuss tires in a later video, but I think they did that because this is a heavier tire. So by making it a smaller diameter, it compensates for the weight at the same gearing as, say, another tire. If you run a GBC 3 Ground Buster or Ground Buster 3, very light tire, but a true 21 inch. So um, if I were to put a 21 or tw a true 20 on this, I'm actually going to lose a half inch, almost a half inch, because it's, it's it, the, your mount point is in from the rear axle. But I probably will lose, um, you know, because you're splitting the difference. So go from a 19 to a 20, half inch raises the swing arm half inch to the dead center of the rear. So I'll probably lose about three eighths because that swing arm mount point uh, for the shock is about three quarters of the way back. So if I if this was a normal linkage, I would measure this and I would say, okay, I need I need my extended length to be probably 15 and a half just to give it a little bit uh, of extra. Now, obviously, we know we could probably go 15 and three quarters because I know I have more, tra more travel in the swing arm. But the no link actually uses this LSR, this whole setup uses a 17 and a half inch shock. So we're almost two inches longer than what the measurement comes out to. And at the ideal ride height of a 250R, not MX for XC or Dune or whatever, you want the bottom of the frame to sit seven, about 17 inches to the bottom of the pegs when that's when you're sitting on it and about 17 and a quarter in the front. You always want the front just about a quarter inch higher. That's hard to attain, especially with the no link because the no link has a longer shock. You know, you start adjusting it too much, you end up losing all the, you know, to take too much preload out, you're gonna lose the, the weight that it was set up for and all that stuff. But, you know, this is kind of a fun exercise to do too because if you have, um, I didn't do it with the motor in because it's, the bike gets a lot heavier so if you have two people, put the motor in, put your exhaust in. Now you can see, is that caliper going to hit the silencer? Uh, do I need to space the silencer out a little bit more? Obviously with this setup, because I have the clock back caliper and brake stay, it's not an issue. So um, I'm not concerned about it. But then to find your compressed, you want the frame to be an inch and a half off the ground. So two by four is an inch and a half. We'll pull it in the rear. Oh. Make sure you don't push that first bar off the ground. All right. So. can see already, the front is going to be fine. And always make sure that you're measuring from right behind the bend in the frame where it goes up in the front. Um, you know, obviously, once everything is on here, my front's going to be fine. But I can see the space here in the rear. And that's because the swing arm is hitting the airbox. So, Partially is because that rear of the airbox is down about a quarter of an inch because I made that custom bracket for it, this custom poly. So it's, and the only reason I did this, uh, somebody cut the airbox mount off the rear here. So I had to, you know, alter the design a little bit to make it work. But, uh, you know, what's really crazy is you can see, well, you can't see, but the chain clearance. Um, it's super close to the airbox. Uh, it would probably rub just a hair, and I actually saw that on my other airbox, on my, on my race bike. So, you know, doing this exercise is actually pretty cool to see how that thing's going to sit. So, what I see here is the 
back of the air box, the bottom is hitting the tube of the swing arm. So even by, that means I would have to lift this. And what I can do is actually move, move this from below the bracket here, the rear, to up. And that would gain me probably, probably a solid, let's see, quarter inch, probably half, probably about three quarters of an inch of extra travel if I just switch that around. So I'm gonna have to see how that's gonna work out, if it's gonna interfere with anything else. Um, but yeah, ideally you want, you want this to be on the ground. We've got, we got a solid inch to an inch and a quarter there. And that's, you know, again, I, the shocks that I have, I don't know the compressed length. And the only way to tell that is to pull the spring, pull the bump, because the bump is designed to flatten out almost all the way. You know, it may flatten out to a quarter inch, eighth inch, whatever, but at, on a full hard hit, it's going to really flatten out. So the only way to tell that is to pull the spring, pull that, put it back together, and install it on the bike, you know, because now you've got no spring compression, and see where that hits. And ideally, you know, in a case like this, um, I'm guessing they probably accounted for this, because there's no way even by moving this up I'm going to gain that much, I don't think. So it probably is designed to stop earlier. Um, you know. But again, uh, I would say, you know, you don't need to do this. It's like a badass hot rod, though. <laughs> um, but uh, kind of cool to do once you get it all together, just to see if anything binds, if anything hits, especially that, that exhaust. A lot of times the caliper, uh, I had another guy message me a couple days ago, and he said his caliper, standard caliper, is hitting his exhaust, which if it's spaced out enough, it shouldn't, but it was. so. Um, this is a good exercise just to see how that's going to work out. And don't, you know, you can see the increase in tow when you really bottom out. Because these tires are even more in. So, just kind of cool to see. And then, um, so what I'm going to do for the next video is to set up the front end. I'm going to treat this as if it was the ideal, ideal ride height. I'm going to set the rear to 7 inches. I'm going to set the front to seven and a quarter, and then I'm going to adjust it. We're going to do the, the, the front end adjustment. And again, it's, it's really hard to get everything dialed to that level, but at least you know, all right, it's set up correctly, and if my shocks are set up correctly, this is what it's going to be. So, all right, that's it for today. Um, do the other one tomorrow, get the front end aligned, and then we'll move on to the next one, get that motor in. All right, guys, have a good weekend. Talk to you soon.